Hey guys, welcome back to another action figure review. Today we're taking another look at the Tunchi Studios Metal Slug 3 figures, this time at the Rebel Soldier 2 pack. Both packages are themed and inspired by the character selection screen, even for the Rebel Soldiers. On the back of the box, we have a faded out image of the actual figure with more warnings and text about how to handle the figures at the bottom. It's the same for the other soldier, just with a different picture in the background. One thing to note is that the authenticity sticker isn't on each box. Instead, the sticker is on the cardboard box that holds the 2-pack. It's wrapped in plastic and has both barcodes and serial numbers, as well as the Tunshi Studios logo. In order to start to get the figures out, you'll have to remove the plastic by cutting it open. We can see that this is where they place the sticker. After opening the top, you can slide out the figures, both separated with their own box. You can then open the package on the side where it's closed by magnets. On the top we have the instructions and warnings for the figure. And then you can slide out the plastic tray that's tightly packed into the box. The Rebel Army is the main enemy in the Metal Slug series, seen across most of the series of shoot 'em up games. The Rebel Army organization was formed by combining multiple terrorist groups that want to overthrow the world government, and even though they have been defeated multiple times, they keep coming back with new weapons, technology, and even allying themselves with aliens called Mars People. Both of these soldiers can be seen wearing the iconic World War II style green uniforms, and come with a variety of weapons seen used by the enemies in game. Tunchi Studios sells the figures in either single or two packs, with the two packs having the exclusive heavy weapon soldier that comes with a rocket launcher and minigun. Both of the soldiers are identical and come with the same body and clothing, but with different facial expressions on the head. Let's take a look at the details. The first soldier has a sad, tired look on his face, big white eyes with tiny black dots with bags under his eyes. A cartoonish large nose, a large frown, and sharp facial features like the cheeks and chin detail the face. The black hair is combed to the back and to the side. On the side of the head, we can see a few details like the large ears, short trimmed hair on the side, and more detail in the sculpt of the hair. The second soldier has a similar tired look except with the wide open smiling mouth. We have the same big white eyes with small black dots, and we can see the details in the teeth and inside the mouth. We have the same hairstyle and details on the hair, but on the sides we can see just how far the mouth is open. A row of copper buttons and heavy stitching detail the center of the green army coat, with the black belt wrapping around the waistline of the figure. We have four cargo pockets stitched onto the body with their own copper button. Not much detail on the back, just the fabric of the coat tucked into the black belt wrapped around the waist. The same with the shoulders, just a thick fabric uniform reaching all the way to the wrist with some stitching on the cuffs. Unlike the other figures who have a closed fisted hand as a default, the soldiers come with gripping hands instead. Lifting up the coat, we can get a better look at the waist of the pants, with heavy stitching details for the waistband, belt loops, and front zipper. On the back we have two more pockets that are usually covered by the coat, as well as more of the heavy stitching for the details on the pants. More heavy stitching details the thighs of the pants with a large seam going down the center, and a large cargo style pocket on top with two cargo buttons. We wrap up the detail of both figures with the boots. Brown leather combat boots stained in a black wash that brings out the details in the wrinkles, edges, and laces of the boots. The sculpting is detailed in a cracked leather texture and even has rubber ridges on the soles of the boots. Let's take a look at the articulation. Like all the other Metal Slug figures, it's advised not to remove the clothing. Normally to get a full range of motion, I would have undressed the figure. Even though the coat seems to be easily removed, the belt and the pants doesn't have any obvious signs for easy removal without damaging the cloth. We have a ball jointed head with minimal upward and downward range. Shoulders that open all the way up with the cloth resting tightly at the maximum range. In order to rotate the shoulders all the way around, you will have to adjust the cloth every bit of rotation. But eventually, you will be able to get the full range. Biceps that rotate, but hard to see due to the clothing. Double jointed elbows that bend inward, with the cloth taking up some of the range as it bunches up. Wrists that rotate, and bend up and down. A ball joint at the chest that's slightly restricted by the clothing. 
Another ball joint at the waist that requires you to finesse the clothing to get a full rotation. Both joints combined still give the figure a good range of bending forward and back. And like all the other Metal Slug figures, the pants heavily restrict the range of the legs. While you can get a good range with the joints, you'll hit a point where you start stretching the cloth. The same thing when bending forward, eventually you'll hit the maximum range. The legs backward motion is still being blocked by the sculpt. The thighs have rotation, double jointed knees that bend backward, legs that rotate, with rotating ankles that slightly bend up and down. Standing next to other Metal Slug 3 figures from Tunchi Studios has them scaled perfectly with each other. The figures scale at the 1 12th scale and stand 5.9 inches tall or 15 centimeters, while setting him up next to Hasbro's 6 inch line has him just slightly smaller. McFarlane's 7 inch scale continues to tower over most other brands. And just for fun, the 1 18th G.I. Joe scale is just way too small for each other. We'll start with the accessories from the first soldier. We have a small green World War II style German helmet that both figures get with straps on the side. Moving the straps out of the way, the helmet perfectly fits on top of the head with the straps tucking into the collar of the uniform. We get a World War II style rifle in a brown and black color. A trigger finger hand to hold the rifle with. The hand fits tightly onto the gun with the finger on the trigger. We get another hand for gripping the barrel of the rifle. It comfortably rests on the front of the rifle. Once all the accessories are installed, it fits smoothly onto the figure. A silver pistol with fine details including logos on the grips. The magazine also comes out detailed with a bullet on the top. We get another trigger finger hand for the pistol. Unlike the rifle hand, the trigger finger is slightly pointed upward allowing you to hold the pistol straight. A green army style infantry backpack with small metal buckles and straps that actually work. We have a small radio with an antenna pre-installed into the backpack, with the antenna sticking out of a small hole in the top of the backpack. To install the backpack, you point the arms backward and then slide the straps on through the arms. Once the backpack is on, you can actually tighten the straps with the straps on the front. It's very lightweight and doesn't make the figure top heavy or hinder articulation. We have a small gunmetal and black knife with a serrated edge. A larger saber style sword with the black finish and the silver edge. The default hands that are installed are made for gripping the knife and saber. The gripping hands are a tight fit, so loosening them up by warming up the hands is recommended. A small grenade with a black weathered effect on it. The open palmed hand is made to hold the grenade. The grenade fits snug into the hand without falling out, allowing dynamic poses. We have a shield decorated with small spikes, handlebars at the back, and a small window in a gunmetal color. The gripping hands for the knife and saber are also used for gripping onto the handlebars. The shield is very lightweight, allowing the figure to hold it up on its own weight in one hand, without making the figure top heavy or imbalanced. Again, with the tight gripping hands, make sure to heat them up before trying to attach them. Now we're moving onto the heavy weapon soldier's accessories, with the same helmet and pairs of hands on both figures. We get a finely detailed heavy minigun, colored black, with a small wash of brown dust. We have a small slot on the side for the ammo belt. The hands that are used for the pistol is also used for the minigun's trigger. The default installed hands, also used for the knife and saber, is used for the handle. We get a large black ammo backpack for the minigun, with two large canvas material straps. On the side we have another port for the ammo belt to attach to. The backpack straps onto the back just like all the other backpacks. You simply pose the arms back and slide the straps on. The belt is already curved to be a snug fit, and while it's not as heavy, the ammo backpack will make balancing the figure a bit harder. And finally, a detailed ammo belt made of a soft plastic that allows it to bend easily. Everything equipped has the figure holding the minigun comfortably, but this much equipment does make the figure a bit harder to balance. We have a very large RPG-2 painted in a silver and black fade effect. 
The rocket at the tip is removable. The scope of the rocket launcher actually allows light through and is made of a clear plastic. We use the pistol hand to hold the RPG and is lightweight enough to be held with one hand. Both figures come with the wood and metal base seen on all the other figures. On the back we have the Tunshi Studios and SNK logos. The base comes with the metal stand that screws into the holes on the back. The claw can be opened and closed and supports the figure fully even when in the air. And since this 2-pack comes with both bases, we can actually use the included clip to attach two bases together. It holds on tightly, combining both bases for a nice effect. More quality figures from Tunshi Studios, the Rebel Soldier 2-pack makes a great addition to the Metal Slug 3 collection. Almost as iconic as the main characters themselves, the Rebel Soldiers are an iconic staple to the Metal Slug series and the fun generic bad guys we love to blow up in-game. The attention to detail once again to the in-game look and feel was done very well, with great facial expressions on the figures to weapons with fine details. These fully closed figures sell for a bit lower than the main characters, especially in the 2-pack, getting two figures at a reduced cost but not as packed as accessories as the other figures. The Heavy Weapon Soldier is exclusive to the 2-pack for now, so if you're interested in the minigun or the rocket launcher, that would be the pack to get. One thing that I noticed from switching the Marco and Tarma to the soldiers is that the soldiers are fully clothed in the green army uniform, restricting more articulation than the hero's clothing did. Since we have full sleeves covering the arms, more consideration needs to be taken for the articulation on the upper body. We can still get a full range of motion, but like the pants on all the figures, there is a limit before the clothing starts to get stretched out or needs to be constantly repositioned to extend the range. Now that I've messed around with the fully closed figure, my one critique would be for more stretchy fabric. I personally might be too careful with these figures for my own good, but at the prices that they are, I don't want to stress the cloth or the joints. The weapons themselves do need to be installed in order as well, as everything is tightly attached to the figure, you'll need to constantly heat up hands to swap anything around. The Rebel Soldiers are an amazing pickup for the Metal Slug fans out there. Perfect for army building, there's enough accessories to have a few different loadouts, these soldiers can hold a variety of poses just as long as you adjust the cloth along the way. The quality on these figures feels great, and some of the pieces are smaller than expected so warming up the hands is going to be a constant thing you'll be doing with these figures. For the price these figures fetch, the quality is there, there are some critiques that come from just the fact that it's a fully cloth figure, like the restricted articulation, but for the most part you can hit most in-game poses especially if you use the stand. These figures have just recently released, so shop around for the best price, as import and aftermarkets of these figures are fetching quite a high price now, so definitely look for the best deal. Overall, amazing figures to pair up with the rest of the Tunchi Studios Metal Slug 3 lineup. You can't go wrong with the Rebel Soldiers, they pose and look great, and personally, I would recommend getting the 2-pack over the single, as some of those accessories are too good to pass up. Alright guys, that's it for this review. Leave a comment letting me know how you like this figure, subscribe, or share the video with your friends to help out the channel.